moving into something that I think is a little bit controversial, but appropriate, because we've had questions about good movements, bad movements. I wouldn't say that there are any bad movements in the mainstream of watchmaking. They usually get filtered out and consigned yeah. to the dust been of history. There are some that are, I think, misapplied in sports watches, <laughs> starting with, I'm going to say, honestly, the JLC 889. Okay. It's a, which is a great movement for a dress watch. Um, it's fantastic movement. We had the, the diagram up uh, before on it. It's a great movement to service, um, but it's also, it's more a delicate movement. It, it's not meant to pound nails with. Yeah, when you're looking at a movement that is thin and fine and would be appropriate at the opera, oftentimes that's a very bad choice for a 50 millimeter sports watch. Yeah. Or in the case of IWC, which learned the hard way during the 90s, a beater pilot's watch, the Mark 12s featuring the 889, that's the reason IWC eventually started moving back towards ETA calibers and then eventually transitioned over to its own in-house. Yeah you know, beater grade calibers. Also, uh, the Frederic Piguet 1185 chronograph. It's used in a lot of movements. It's used in a lot of watches. Uh, it's, I actually like the movement itself because of its, its compactness. Um, it did transition into the Omega. <coughs> uh, actually, Omega coaxialed it, uh, made it a lot larger. Parts are not interchangeable, though. Um, look, that's a lot more difficult to service. Mm -hmm. Vertical clutch design. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice watch, but again, it's nothing you're really going to want to beat on. It's not, uh, I've seen a lot of different applications um, by retrogrades. Yes. You know, and it's, uh, it, it's a nice, like, to me, it's a nice move to work on, but it's not the most durable movement. It's like, put it this way, if you've got a purebred pug, he's a show winner, you're not going to hook him up to a sled. Yeah. Like, there are horses for courses, there are mm. dogs for the, the job, and there are movements for the yeah. application. So if you're looking at something like a Vacheron Constantin yeah. overseas uh, 49150 yeah. from the second generation, it's a great watch, yeah. it's a great movement in a great watch. Don't subject it to Rolex levels of duress. Right. It's a great size, too, in, that, in that case. And, uh, you know, also you're going to see it in the Royal Oak chronograph. Right. You're going to see it, like Mike said, adapted as the 1285 mm -hmm. of Bausch becoming yeah. the 3300s in the Omega. Which is a lot bigger, though. Yes, yeah. it is. It's yeah. much thicker. And also, uh, you know, the 1185, I, I believe it's, it's almost ubiquitous. It pops up in places you don't even expect, like Gerald Genta yeah. multi-retrograde mm -hmm. chronographs, as Mike has explained. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. So basically, when it comes time to put a dent in your watch, don't, don't do what I did to mine. Not with that. Uh, also, Gerard Perigo 3300 family, the, uh, the 3000. The, the GP3000, it's, yeah, I've got, actually, I didn't bring the parts down for that one. Uh, the GP3000 is a tricky movement to service. Uh, it is very, it's a very delicate movement. It is by no means a 2892 um, as far as durability. Um, they use it for a lot of modules. They use it, and it's, it's a lot, it takes a lot more, a lot more time to service that movement. And I've, I've done my share of them. Uh, again, I'll, I would take two, you know, a couple 2892s over it just because of durability and the driving strength and the power they put out. Um, once you get it running, you can fine tune it. But uh, to me, the balance is very small on the watch, too, which also it makes it harder to regulate in you know, to get uh, chronometer specs out of it. And that's one of the reasons that uh, Gerard Pergo started to introduce their own regulating organ during yeah. the late 2000s to move away from that finicky 3000 yeah. series, but still ubiquitous and look for it in a big sports watch. That's one you don't want to bash.